Dear students, I am Bharat Kashyap, lecture biology at GSSS, Majwa District, Mandi. Today, I am going to teach you sixth chapter of biology, molecular basis of inheritance, and today's topic is DNA replication. Let us begin today's topic. Replication of DNA. Look at the picture here. This is showing semi-conservative DNA replication. Watson and Crick in 1953 had proposed the double helical structure of DNA. They also gave the idea of the semi-conservative way of its replication. For this, two strands of DNA separate. They act as templates for synthesis of new complementary strands on them. After replication, each DNA molecule would have one parental and one newly synthesized strand on it. This is why it is called semi-conservative replication of DNA. In eukaryotes, the replication of DNA takes place in synthetic phase or S phase of cell cycle. The replication of DNA and cell division cycle must be highly coordinated as the failure in cell division after DNA replication results in polyploidy, a type of mutation. Now let us discuss the experimental proof of semi-conservative DNA replication. The experiment was performed by Mieselson and Stahl in 1958. They grew Acericia coli in a medium containing ammonium chloride where N15 is the heavy isotope of nitrogen for many generations. N15 was incorporated into the newly synthesized heavy DNA. You can look here. This is the heavy DNA. Both the strands have N15. This heavy DNA separated from normal DNA by centrifugation in a cesium chloride density gradient. As it settles at bottom of test tube, the cesium chloride gradient is the method for separating DNA based on its density. The lightest density substances remain at top, whereas the heaviest ones settle at the bottom. So the heavy DNA molecule settle at the bottom of the test tube. Then these heavy DNA bacteria grown in normal ammonium chloride solution. Now the DNA was extracted from culture after first generation. That is after 20 minutes as E. coli divides in 20 minutes. They had a hybrid or intermediate density. You can look here. This is the first generation. So intermediate or hybrid DNA were formed. Now the DNA extracted from the culture after second generation. That is after 40 minutes was composed of equal amounts of heavy hybrid DNA 50% and 50% are light DNA in second generation. It proves semi-conservative DNA replication. Now DNA replication, the various machinery and enzymes which are used for this process. It takes place by following steps. 
first one is activation of deoxyribonucleotides the four types of nucleotides of dna are adenosine monophosphate guanosine monophosphate cytosine monophosphate thymidine monophosphate these are found free floating in the nucleus they are activated by atp to form deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates in presence of enzyme phosphorylase this process is called phosphorylation so look at the different nucleotides this is deoxy adenosine monophosphate deoxy guanosine monophosphate deoxy cytidine monophosphate deoxy thymidine monophosphate these are provided energy by atp in presence of enzyme and they get activated to form deoxy adenosine triphosphate deoxy guanosine triphosphate deoxy cytidine triphosphate and deoxy thymidine triphosphate these are now activated deoxy ribonucleotides they take part in further process of dna replication let us now discuss the second step that is a recognition of initiation point for dna replication the entire dna do not unwind as it require more energy hence it occurs at specific points called initiation points or origin of replication for identifying the initiation point on dna molecule specific initiator proteins are needed in bacteria and viruses the chromosome is small and may be only one origin of replication in them in eukaryotes with large dna molecule there may be many initiation points next step is unwinding of dna molecule look at these diagrams the dna helix unwinds and uncoils into single strands of dna by breakdown of weak hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen bases we have following enzymes responsible for unwinding of dna molecule these are helicases these help in unwinding of helix then topoisomerases these cut and rejoin one strand of dna thus help in separation of dna helix look at these here they unwind and cut the dna now formation of replication bubbles it can be explained if two highly intertwined ropes are pulled apart its two strands automatically intertwine as soon as application of force is stopped and if one intertwined intertwined rope is cut the tension is relieved and two strands fail to come together similar is the case with the topoisomerases they relieve the tension of dna strand to separate them due to unzipping of double stranded dna replication replication bubbles are formed this you can see here which extends as y shaped replication fork when there is a cut here it form the replication fork 
नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ आर एन ए प्राइमर डी एन ए पॉलिमरेज इज कैन नॉट सिंथेसाइज ए न्यू डी एन ए ऑफ देर ओन एंड रिक्वायर ए फ्री थ्री डेज हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप टू विच दे कैन एड डी एन ए न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स इट इज अकम्पलिश बाई ए शॉर्ट आर एन ए फॉर द प्राइमर which provides a free 3 dash hydroxyl group to which dna polymerase can add the first dna nucleotide see this is the first dna nucleotide it is attached at hydroxyl group here the 5 dash phosphate of each incoming nucleotide is joined by the dna polymerase to the 3 dash hydroxyl group on the end of the growing nucleic acid chain the new dna molecule does have a short piece of rna at the beginning the short piece of rna it remain in this dna molecule which is going to be formed here next step is formation of new dna chains so look at the diagrams here dna polymerases can only form a strand in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction the 5 dash to 3 dash growth of both new strands means that one of the two strands is made in small pieces as the two parental strands of dna are anti parallel they have 5 dash and 3 dash ends at opposite sides the new strands may be of two types leading strand at each replication fork one new strand that can be synthesized continuously in 5 dash to 3 dash direction because it is being made in the same direction that the replication fork is opening up this is known as leading strand the other one is lagging strand the synthesis of other new strand requires multiple rna primers which lay down many short pieces of new dna that are later joined these are the small pieces of dna these short nucleic acid pieces each composed of a small stretch of rna primer and about 1000 to 2000 dna nucleotides are called okazaki fragments these are the okazaki fragments for rizi okazaki the scientist who first demonstrated their existence the removal of rna primer the use of rna primer requires that the rna nucleotides must be removed and replaced with dna nucleotides as each newly synthesized piece of dna starts out with an rna primer it makes a new nucleic acid strand that is part rna and part dna the new dna strand cannot have pieces of rna attached with it hence rna nucleotides have to be removed and the gaps are filled in with dna nucleotides the dna pieces are then joined together by the enzyme dna ligase now understand this process with the help of the diagram this is double stranded dna and now the straightforward replication of leading strand
from 5 dash to 3 dash. This is the leading strand. No problem of replication is there. And now addition of RNA primer to lagging strand as we have studied. This is the lagging strand and these are small pieces of RNA primers and this is the enzyme primase. The DNA polymerase replicate between the gaps. As these gaps are filled with DNA polymerase enzyme and formation of DNA pieces took place. RNA primer is now removed. This we have studied here. The DNA polymerase fills in gaps with the help of DNA ligase also and complete strand is formed. This is the lagging strand. So this is how the RNA primer are removed from DNA strands. Now last step is the proofreading and DNA repair. The base pairing is always complementary. That is cytosine with guanine, adenine with thymine. It ensures exact replication. It is possible one out of 1000 may be wrongly introduced. They can be removed by activities of DNA polymerases. You just look here. This is the wrongly thymine is wrongly added here. So it is removed by exonuclease activity. So this is the removed from here. Even wrong bases escaped from proofreading can be corrected by repair enzymes. For example, nucleases to cut off and ligases to join. So thereby proofreading is done. Formation of dimers. In this type, pyrimidines like thymine form thymine dimer which blocks the replication. This can be repaired by ultraviolet irradiation. These are the dimers. Thymine dimers. So once the dimer has been detected, the surrounding DNA is opened to make a bubble and enzyme cut the damaged region out of bubble. So new undamaged DNA is replaced with the help of ligase enzyme. So this is the proofreading and how DNA repair takes place. With this we come to completion of today's topic. I hope you have understood it properly and in the end thanks for watching.